Hello friends, Sarah here from the Centre for Mental Health. I hope all is well. Before I talk about our impact report, um, I really think it's important that we acknowledge that 2020 has been quite an extraordinary year. Many of us have lost loved ones. Many of us have lost jobs. Uh, quite a lot of us are struggling with the changes in our daily lives. Our children, young people have had to face confusion and chaos. It's been a challenge. And as we go into 2021, I think that we look with optimism at what might possibly happen, you know, getting our freedom back, all of those things, the vaccine brings hope. But for many of us, we will be uh, looking to recover, to rebuild and renew. So the centre sends love and solidarity to you and um, to your families. We know it hasn't been easy. We know that it's not going to be easier, um, much easier for a while. But we stand in hope with you. We deeply believe that things can be better. We've got to work together and we will continue to do that. So look, 2020 was an extraordinary year for the Centre for Mental Health. We really made a decision early on to be in service to the system, to our colleagues, to people experiencing uh, mental illness and uh, to equality. You will see from the work that we've done that it's been very much about pushing forward on an agenda that's about recognising that for many of us, life just isn't fair. Injustice around poverty, around housing, around racial justice, all of these things are still not within everybody's grasp. And until it is, the Centre for Mental Health will continue fighting. We stand strong, we stand strong with our colleagues and partners and those that tell us about their experiences every day. We know that in order for mental health to be realised, that many of the social determinants and those factors that really harm people's lives are addressed, that, that they become front and centre of all policy that happens in the UK. We know that there aren't uh, easy, quick fixes, but within our work, we always try and strive for solutions. So recently when we published our mental health for all, we really thought hard about, well, actually, if we're, if we're saying this isn't good enough, what do we need to do to fix it? And we created a framework for equality in mental health. Please do look at that. It's one of our most important pieces of work. But amongst that, 2020 has been a massively busy year. And, you know, I've got this sort of details in front of me, really. We've published 26 reports. We have uh, worked on about 45 projects at any one time. We've shared around 80 blogs and vlogs. We have also really supported and provided the business case that has allowed the sector and business to fundraise for mental health. We've kept equality in focus. We continue to do that. And I um, want to take an opportunity here to say thank you to my team, you know, as we work from our kitchen tables, our bedrooms, our sofas, uh, the team have done all of that with such grace and dignity, such commitment to justice, such commitment to equality. It's been quite extraordinary. Uh, I've been proud to be leading the Centre for Mental Health every single day. As we go into 21, um, look, it's not going to be easy. We know it's not going to be easy for a long time. But we stand together. We stand in hope with you. We will continue to work hard. And if you have a moment to look at our impact report within, you know, all of the things that you've got to do, we'd be really grateful. We don't have uh, all of the answers, but together with you, we think we might have a chance. So please stay in touch. Let us know what you think please do look at the work that we're doing and share it, tell your neighbours about it, post it on Facebook, do what you've got to do to spread the word. Thank you for your support throughout 2020. We have really, really valued it. And all of our work is testimony to that and our commitment to you. So uh, take care and see you soon.